Welcome back, Gen Chem 1. We are going to, this if you can believe it, this is our last video in our Unit 3. So we are going to tackle double displacement reactions uh, for the second time. And this one is specifically going to be for acids and bases. And I want to do this in two parts. I want to write out the double displacement reactions, but I want to start by naming acids and bases. So in Gen Chem 1, we're going to really focus on the original definition of an acid and a base, and that's the Arrhenius acid and base. Arrhenius was actually a Swedish physicist and chemist in the 1800s, and he looked at substances dissolved in water and actually figured out that there are substances that are the two halves of water. And the half of water that gives us the H part is an acid, and the half of water that gives us the other half is a base. And so what's awesome is that these examples are what pop up in our double displacement reaction, and this is our third driving force. So let me kind of first teach us how to name acids and bases, and then I'm going to show you what I mean by the two halves of water and how they form water, and that's our driving force in our acid-base reactions. What's fascinating is that acid-base reactions together, when you mix an acid and a base, they are one of the fastest reactions out there. Uh, they're everywhere in nature, they're in bio, they are everywhere. So let's start by naming some of our acids. And I gave us some links for Arrhenius if you're curious, but I wanna start with naming. So if you have to hit pause for a second, I would love for you to have your common anion sheet. The one I handed out in class or then posted on Blackboard, and I like that one specifically because it's organized in a way that's going to help us name our acids and our bases. So if you're looking at that, find the part that says table 6.8 anions. That's the one that we want to use. So if you've got to hit pause, hit pause and grab that table. And I want to start on the left of that table You'll notice we've got all kinds of columns here on that table. I want to start right here with the halogens. And what's funky is that for something to be an acid means in the original definition, now there have been two alternative definitions since then, but in the original definition of an acid, it means that when you dissolve that substance in water, you're actually going to break that covalent bond. So let's look at and let's start with our halogens. So if we have our HCl that we had in our last video, that is a covalent bond. But we also drew our polar arrows in unit two. If we were to draw an arrow for this bond, we would see that it's quite polar towards our chlorine. And what that really means is those electrons really are around, if we picture the electrons, they're really around chlorine a whole lot more than hydrogen, giving that hydrogen a partial positive. So this bond is polar enough that it will actually dissolve in water. Now, most of our covalent bonds do not do this, but in our acids, they do. So what happens if we dissolve that in water? We're gonna break this bond. Only when that bond breaks, the electrons are gonna go with chlorine. So what happens in water is that you have a plus side and a minus side, almost like now an ionic bond. So your chlorine has all of those electrons around it. It has that minus one, and your hydrogen gave it away for free. So now they're both dissolved in water. And then any of our substances that give an H plus when dissolved in water is our original definition of an acid. Okay, that is awesome. So if you were to take HCl and put a little bit in water, that would be quite acidic. Uh, don't do it. 
and don't taste it. So all of our halogens are going to do that. In fact, we'll learn in Gen Chem 2 that our HCl, HBr, HI are all very strong acids. Our H HF is a weak acid, but all of them are acids. So what's fascinating is for the HCl, that whole halogens, the four of them, if they are not in water, so if they are pure, that bond is still there. The covalent bond is still there. So when they're pure, you name them one way. We name that hydrogen chloride, just like we learned in our covalent naming. That is hydrogen chloride. That would be a gas, and that is pure. But when you put it in water, those properties change, and now you have an acid. So in water, we're actually going to name it different. And it's only for those four. The rest of them just have one name because they all come in water. You can't quite get them pure. So just for these four, for the halogens, we're going to have two names. So hydrogen chloride when it's pure. But then when we put it in water, you've got to tell your audience, okay, hang on a second, that bond broke and now it's an acid and it's in water. So then we're going to name it hydro chloric acid. Okay, so we're telling our audience it's now an acid, it's in water, and we are looking at the chlorine, the HCl version. All right, so each one of these, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, they all have two names. So they would be hydrogen fluoride, If it's pure, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. I think you see the trend there. Those are pure. All right, those are all pure, but then when you add them to water, now you've got to tell your audience. So now you would have hydrofluoric acid that would be HF aqueous. HF pure is a gas, okay? If you have um, your HBr, that would be hydrobromic acid. And that would be aqueous, that's in water. And then for HI, that would be hydro iodic acid, and that would be HI aqueous. All right, so go ahead and, and maybe highlight that box on your anions. That's your halogens, those group 7A halogens. They have two names. Everything else in our, in our acids is going to have just one name. So maybe take a screenshot of this or pause for a second. I'm going to erase these. Let's name some of the other groupings on that anion sheet. Okay. They're all going to have some acidic names. Let's kind of tackle them. I'm going to give you a shortcut. This is one of those things that if you've had this in high school chemistry or some intro chemistry, you probably had to memorize these and you hated it. Um, or you learned this whole method of subtract oxygens and add hydrogen, all this, uh, it's all crap. Let me show you a shortcut. All right, so take your common anion sheet. Let me scroll down just a little bit and give ourselves some space. And now we're going to focus on a couple of these other blocks. So you've got a block right here next to it called the oxo or the oxy anions. And then you've got another block right here. That's the oxy anions. And you've got one little block right there. All of these. So let's start with this first one. Let's start with that first column. And you'll see it's actually pretty huge, right? There's a whole lot of things listed in there. In fact, the first four, let's just spell them out. And then what's the name and the charge? We've got, and then we've got a name of perchlorate. And then we've got, if you look all down here, 
they're all versions of CLO. And they all are more complicated than just HBr or HCl because now we've got a covalent part with the chlorine and oxygen, plus then we're going to add hydrogens. So on this one, this is the chlorate. And then our ClO2 is the chlorite. And then the hypochlorite. Now, acids have been around forever, and they have been named forever. So there's some old techniques and some new techniques. So let me show you a shortcut. They're all based on the most common acid or the one that is found in the most abundance. We would have no idea of knowing that. So that's why I'm going to show you this shortcut. If you look at the endings, we have A-T-E or I-T-E. That's it. And when we look at the charge, we already know how many hydrogens have to go with that compound. So let's take the first one, the perchlorate, ClO4. You've got one minus. So how many hydrogens would have to go with that? Our hydrogens are our plus side. So just like our unit two, you know, your charges still have to add up to zero. And what makes this an acid is that your plus side is H. Your plus side can be all kinds of things. We could have sodium perchlorate. Awesome, that's a salt. What makes it an acid is the fact that your hydrogen is that plus side. So anytime you see an oxyanion, Use your charges, put the right number of hydrogens out front, and then let me show you how to name it. We're going to literally take that anion name, perchlorate, and we are going to take the ATE and it turns into the ic acid. So this is literally perchloric acid. That is the name. So anytime you see ATE, that turns into ic acid. So let's do the next one. If we have ClO3, what's our charge? Minus one. So how many hydrogens go out front? Plus one, there's our acid. And then what's our anion name? Chlorate. So let's subtract turn this into chloric acid, okay? All right, let's do the other two. When you have chlorite, what happens to that? All right, let me erase here. We have only two versions. We've got A-T-E and I-T-E. Our I-T-E turns into us acid. Let me spell that. All right, chlorite. Now we've got I-T-E in our ending. How many hydrogens do we put out front? Still one, okay, balance your charges. Now this turns into chlor -us acid. So anytime you see that I-T-E ending, you just swap it for chlor for us acid. So then let's do that last one this would be hypochlorous acid. Okay. If you look at those oxyanions in that sheet that I gave you, every single one of them either ends with A-T-E or I-T-E. All you need to do is take that A-T-E and turn it into ic acid or I-T-E and turn it into us acid. Done. We've now named all of our acids. So if we look at our common anions table, here we have acids if H is your plus side. So if H is your plus side, that's an acid. We've got acid anions here. We've got the oxo anions here, here, and here. All of these are now an acid if 
hydrogen is the plus side. Now this one just already has some hydrogens in it, so you can already see that they are matching the other the other oxyanions. So in those in those sections, if you want to highlight them on your anions, any one of those, just take ATE or ITE, put some hydrogens out front, you know how many, and then turn that into ic acid or us acid. And now you've got your acids. All right, so then how do you spot a base? Well, we need an H and an OH to be the two halves of water. So anything that has hydroxide as your minus side will be your base. All right, that one's easier. That's why we did the acids first. All right, so let's put all of this together in a double displacement reaction so you can see again the definition of an acid and a base and how we make water. All right, so let's put some of our naming to, to practice. All right, if we are looking at hydrochloric acid, that means that we have the HCl and it is aqueous. All right, sodium hydroxide. Hydroxide is one of your common anions. It's a minus one. Your sodium is a plus one. All right, check this out. If you mix them, this is muriatic acid and drain cleaner. You stick these two together and in less than seconds they react with each other and you will make salt and water. All right, but let's look at it. What's about to happen? We are about to change partners. This is a double displacement reaction. Let's change partners first the easy way. So let's take our sodium and it will end up with your chlorine. So let's do that one. Let's change that partner. And we can write this in our sleep again. It ends up like that. And we know that will be aqueous. Okay, then look at your other two partners. Oh, I feel like we are coming full circle right now. Here's your plus side. Here's your minus side. When you put HOH together, what are we about to make? That is water. And water, unlike these counterparts that look like they would be a salt, they're not. The second you bond those together, this is completely covalent. Water does not dissolve in water. We could get all deep with our feelings on that one, but water is water. Water doesn't dissolve water. No bonds are breaking in the process of dissolving water. So we mark that with an L. Our water is pure. You just made a covalent bond. It does not break and it does not go backwards and reform that H plus and OH minus. So that's why it is our driving force. And we'll learn this equilibrium in Gen Chem 2. We'll spend a whole unit on acids and bases, and we'll find that it is possible for water to go backwards, but it's one in 555 trillion. So as far as statistics go, this makes an awesome driving force because it's so rare for that to go backwards. So this is our third double displacement example, this is our third driving force, is making water. And anytime you mix an acid with a base, you have the two halves of water, and that's the driving force for every one of those reactions. They're still in water, just like our other examples. And you could form a precipitate too, but for sure you're going to make water. And then there's another simplification for these though. I feel a sparkle pen because we get to simplify. So there is a simplification and that is that we don't need our solubility table for our acid and our base because the second you mix them, they will react. They dissolve each other. 
And I just unlocked the secret to probably 90% of our cleaning products there. If you're ever wondering, well, how does Drano work? Or how does, how, why can I take vinegar and dip my shower head in it? We are hitting probably 90% of our cleaning products right now. Acids and bases, when they're mixed, it doesn't matter their solubility. They will dissolve each other. So we actually don't need our table. As soon as we recognize we have an acid and a base, we are gonna mark them both aqueous. So you can use your table for your product side if you want to, but you don't need it for the reactant side. All right, so let's do another one of these. And well, let's actually go ahead and, and write the total ionic for this. And then let's write the net ionic for this, just for good practice. Okay, so let's, let's see how we would write that. We've got all of our information already. I'm just gonna go ahead and go ahead and call that water there. Okay, so what would our total ionic equation look like? Well, we're gonna break that covalent bond. That's what makes that an acid. And mark it aqueous for both of them. That's what makes them weird. They dissolve in water. Let's take our sodium and our hydroxide and let's do the same thing. Oh, that came out real fluffy. How's that? And then we are going to make salt, but we know our salt because we saw it in our previous video. Our salt is already soluble, so that is a spectator ion. And then our actual driving force, uh, let me just, can I just put a plus there? I just have to continue on the bottom. Our driving force then is that H plus and that OH minus, and it's okay to go straight to water. That is what that forms. And that is a liquid that is not aqueous. And this is our driving force. And these are our spectator ions. Okay, awesome. So then what does our net ionic equation look like? Let me erase this bottom part. I took up too much space. Our net ionic equation then is literally that H and that OH. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're coming full circle on some definitions. Hold your seats. All right, we're taking that H plus and that OH minus. And shut the front door. Is this not the definition of an acid? This is the definition of a base. And when you combine them, you make water. And that is our driving force. So in fact, in all of our acids and bases, won't we have the same net ionic equation? Yes. The only thing that would make that different is if your salt was not soluble. But otherwise, check it out. Every one of our acids and bases, your driving force is water and your net ionic equation is gonna look the same. That's pretty cool, huh? Two for the price of one there. All right, let's try another one. Let's see how good we are with that naming. And let's take sulfuric acid. Holy crap, now we have to go backwards. How do you get the structure from the name? Well, all right, I have ic acid. So that means it's coming from whatever the common anion is that ends in A-T-E. So that means sulfate. All right, what is sulfate? Well, you know that is from your sheet, SO4, it's a minus two. Okay, hold your seats. How many hydrogens do I put out front then? I need, hydrogen will be a plus one. So how many do you need? Two. All right, there's your sulfuric acid. Let's mix that with lithium hydroxide. Let's double check our charges there. Hydroxide is a minus one. Lithium is a plus one. Okay, we're good there. And then let's take lithium sulfate. All right, we've got a minus two here, plus one. So we need two of them. And... Aha, water. 
and we already know that's liquid. All right, so let's use let's use our our little shortcut here. We have an acid and we have a base, so I'm going to mark them both aqueous right away. Lithium sulfate. I'm going to check my chart. Um, lithium, almost everything is aqueous for lithium. Do you notice that? That is aqueous. Okay, and I'm going to just double check my balance. Hang on, hold the front door. Um, it looks like I'm gonna need two here. Well, shoot, how many waters are you about to make then? How about two? Okay, perfect, I love it. All right, let's write our total ionic equation. So how do you know what bonds to break then? You're gonna break this bond to your H. That's what makes it the acid. That's also the bond that we broke even when we had that as an ionic bond. So we're gonna have H plus and SO4 minus. Let's add in our details. Our SO4. Okay, then we're gonna have our lithium and our hydroxide. Let's break that bond. Remember lithium to the hydroxide, that's the ionic bond, so that's the easy one. And then we actually have two of each one of those. And then we're gonna make for spectator ions, that lithium and that sulfate are still they are aqueous, so they aren't going to reform. So let's keep those apart. Those are our spectator ions. And then we also form water. And we are going to form two moles of water, and our water is a liquid. Okay, I love it. So that was the big one. That's the total ionic equation. And now let's write the net ionic equation. This kind of feels like cheating because it's the same as the other example. We are gonna make water, that's our driving force. Okay, and they are both aqueous. And then let's just double check our balance. Didn't we have two here and two here, two there? I love it. So there is our full total ionic, net ionic equations for our acid-base reactions. All right, let's see if we've got one more. We do, shut the front door. Oh, this is as mean as it gets. We don't even have the products, but shut up because we can figure out what the products are. All right, grab your sheet. It's gonna get mean in here. What the heck is acetic acid? Uh, do you have anything on your sheet that is acetate? Remember the ic acid is coming from the ATE, so that means acetate. All right, I just found that on my common anions and it looks like this and it has a minus one. So how many hydrogens are you gonna put out front? Even if you've never seen this before, now you know how to name those. There you go. There is our acetic acid. And then potassium hydroxide. Let's double check those. Okay, I love it. And then now, sweet Jesus, we gotta predict. All right, let's swap partners. We know in a double displacement, we take our positives and we change partners. So let's do -si do let's swap these two. Let's do the easy one first. Let's put the K with our C2H3O2. So let's make this potassium acetate. And then we know that our H and OH make water. Okay, I love it. So let's add in, oh, got a little chubby there. All right, let's add in some details then. 
Our potassium acetate, uh, is that soluble? It is. So let's say that's aqueous. All right, and we know when we mix an acid and a base, they are both aqueous. So then, and our driving force, of course, is our formation of water. So this is how you're going to take this example and go from names and then even predict your products. I do like to ask that in your homework that you predict some of these products. So you can literally write out the two and then swap these, swap those pluses. And remember, when you've got HOH, it makes water. Okay, awesome. I hope this was helpful. You're really going to want to practice some of these in, in your homework. I've got some acids and bases in your homework. This is the last video for all of the unit three stuff. So I'm